Hi everyone, welcome to this grasshopper tutorial of the Arkansas Art Center by Studio Gang. Today we're going to look at how to make the roof forms of this project using some interesting components such as the tween curves component, managing our lists with sift and weave, and also looking at the graph mapper and the random number component. So let's get started. All right, guys, so this building essentially consists of these roof forms that, you know, they're curvy and they have these, you know, divisions in them where you have these basically these valleys and these peaks that create the form of the roof. And so what I think we'll do is just try to attempt this one up here. Let's go into Rhino and have Rhino and Grasshopper open. I have two curves over here. Okay, and I make sure that they are both in the same direction. And I can start referencing them here into Grasshopper. Now, if you wanna follow along, make sure that you download the components from the link on the video, okay? Or there's a link in the description box as well. So here, I'm just gonna start labeling these. Um, use another display for this and call this uh, curve one and set one curve and then curve two. Okay, now that we have both of these in here, one of the components I really like to use is the tween curve component. All right, and to use this, what you need is you need two curves and a factor. So if I put these two curves in, you see that it starts to create this curve in the middle. It's really an approximation of the two input curves. And I'll show you what that does. If I put in a slider, say at 25% on one side, you see that it's closer to one curve. And as I slide it over towards one, it starts going to the other curve. So it really goes between zero to one, zero being one curve, and the number one being the other curve. So of course, in this project, there's, you know, there's more than one line in there. So instead of feeding one value, I wanna feed a range of values that go between zero and one. And there is a component for that, and it's called range. All right, so if I plug in the range component, you see that the output of the range component is actually 11 numbers that go between number zero and number one. Now we may not need 11 divisions, and let's just go ahead and see over here. You'll notice that uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, you probably have always an even number in the middle over here. So if I bring a slider in, say the number five, just as an example, and I plug that in, you see if I plug in five, I get one, two, three, four lines. So maybe I need to make the slider an even number slider, okay? And we will call the slider divisions. and change its color. And so now I always have an odd number of lines in the middle of the roof. And we'll see why this is important later. But I can always change this value and you see it updates. For now, I'm just going to leave it here at four or six. That should be enough. Now, what do we need to do next? So now we have a set of curves. If I look at the output of the tween component, you see that I have seven curves right now. And if I go back to the image, you'll see that some of the curves are up and some of the curves should go down right so the ones on the ends will stay down and really like those are the valleys and then it peaks valleys peaks valleys and so on so let's isolate every alternate curve okay so one way to do that is to use the sift component s-i-f-t sift pattern okay and what this does is if you put in any list of uh, you know curves numbers points whatever it may be it will start to divide it into two different lists depending on what the pattern is. And you see there's already a default pattern in there and it's dividing it up into twos and twos and ones and so on. If I hover over sift pattern, you see that it has zero, zero, one, one. That means two items are going to output zero, two items are going to output one and it repeats. So instead of that, what we need is just zero and one. So I'm just gonna make a panel, make sure it's multi-line is off. And so you have two data items zero and one. If I put those in there, you see that now I have f one curve going in output zero, the next curve goes here and so on. Now, I don't like these nulls, so I do wanna remove the nulls. And one way to do that is to just clean this up. So type clean tree. And if you put in a tree, 
you'll see that it cleaned it up and get rid of those nulls. I can copy and paste this. And here, now it's much cleaner. Now let's see which one of these is the inner curves, so to speak, which will be the peaks and which one will be the valleys. If I use my red line component, very useful component to just highlight some curves, you'll see that the first set that I highlighted is actually the ones that are going to be the valleys, right? They're going to stay down. So, and the next set of curves is the ones that we need to move up or down. In this case, we're going to move them up. So let's go ahead and delete these for a moment. Okay, so now we know is this one we need to worry about. This we need to move up. So let's just use a move component. All right, and let's move this in the Z direction. So it's going straight up. And let's put a factor in. I'm just going to make a slider for now. Let's say it goes from zero to one and a half. Let's just see what that does. So as I move this up and down, you see that it moves over here. Now, it may not be so clear, so I will take that red line component and instead plug it in to the output of the move. And you should see that as I move the slider, it moves these up and down. All right, so now I think we're ready to create some surfaces. We have a set of curves. So what I need to do is first put all these curves back into one list because now there's still two different lists, right? One is the valleys at the bottom and one are the peaks uh, on top out of here, the move component. So just as we use SIFT to split the list apart, we need to use another component to put them back together, to weave them back together. So use the weave component, okay? And we're going to use the exact same pattern. So the zero, one pattern that we had here, and I can call this pattern instead, put that in pattern. Stream zero is the same stream that came out from output zero, put that in here. And output one now is the moved uh, curve. Okay, so let's get those in. And if I look at the result, I should see that I'm back to having seven curves. Okay, now uh, usually you would probably use something like the loft command. If you put it in this component, you'll start to see a surface. What I like to do is in this particular case, since they're straight edges, I like to actually loft them individually. So the first two, to, so number zero and one together, then one and two, then two and three, three and four. So I want to put them in pairs and loft them together. So there's a component I made, very useful. It's called make pairs. If you just type make pairs, you should get this component, put the data in there, and instead, send this to the loft component. And if you look at the output from what we had before and after, you'll see that it's actually made different pairs, six different pairs of curves that then get lofted. Okay, and you can of course preview this with our BRED preview just to have something that looks a little bit cleaner. All right, so, so far we've done the basic steps to set this up. So now let's add a little bit of variety to this. Okay, so now let's go back all the way to the beginning. And you see here, when we did a range, we got these values, right? So let's try and manipulate these values a bit so that it's not such an even division, but rather we have a little more control over it. So let me add first uh, a little more divisions in there. That these are three dimensional curves and you don't have to keep them in the 2D plane. So I could just turn their control points on. And if I start moving them, you'll see that I'm actually manipulating the surfaces and that they're following along, right? So the script is not broken in any way. So it's quite a quite you know, useful to set it up in 2D and then start moving things around in three dimensions and testing it out. All right, anyway, back to adding some variety. Now, one of the components I really like is the graph mapper. Okay, and what this does is it takes an input of certain values and it can output another set of values based on how they interact with a certain curve. So for example, if I use this conic curve, uh, first you'll see that the values really haven't changed at all. If I just move them around a little bit, it might become easier to compare these values. All right, but if I start moving this, you see the zero and the one remain the same, but the values in between start changing, right? The zero and one are the same because this curve does not change at the beginning or at the end. It stays in those two locations. But let's see what happens if I start plugging this in to the factor instead of the values that we just had from the range component. All right, now you see I can start manipulating, you know, where these 
peaks and valleys are more concentrated by using this component here. Right, so that's one way, and you can go ahead and try testing some of the other ones out. There's a power curve. Uh, you can go, there's a Bezier one that might be quite interesting. You can have a lot more control on this one. So go ahead and start experimenting with those, and you'll see that you can add some variety to your shape. Another way to do that is when we start moving the, you know, the, the curves up and down. Right, so so far one slider that moves all of them up or down by the exact same value. But instead maybe we can add some variety here. So one way to do that is perhaps using a random number. Right, so instead of moving it by a fixed number like 1.3 or so, we just you know have some randomness to that. So uh, let's construct a domain. This tells the random component exactly what range of numbers we're looking for. So I'm going to take this 1.3 and say that it, it ends at 1.3. I think the domain start is by default zero, as it says there. So is, this is telling the random component, all right, give me any random value between zero and 1.3. Next is going to ask you how many numbers you want. Well, that depends how many curves are we trying to lift up. So one way to do that is to figure out, well, how many curves do we have here? We have four. Now I could enter the number four there, but since I could, of course, that number four could change at any time since I can move this slider. Uh, let's instead use the list length component so that it always feeds the random component the exact number of curves that we have. So if I put that component in there, the output is five. Okay, so I'll get five numbers out. And if I see here, I have five random numbers that go between zero and 1.3. And I can use this here instead and you'll see that they have a random value assigned to them now what I could do of course is you know change that minimum instead of the minimum being zero it could be let's say one and this you know you can even go up to two and a half so you really have a lot of uh, options here on how you want to treat this and you know it's just worth playing around you can even change the seed for now I'm just going to leave that the same but you know, you could take this a lot further. So this is one uh, set of curves. And what you could do is just take this whole thing, turn it into a cluster. And like I've done over here, I turn it into a cluster where I can enter the roof divisions and the maximum height. And you see that uh, I can do that multiple times. Like I've done it three times here. And you can start getting something that looks a little bit closer to what they have. So of course, this is a very quick tutorial just to get some rough shapes here but it's a good way to start just experimenting and start messing with some forms. I hope you guys like this tutorial again to follow along if you need any help installing those special components click the video on your screen right now it should give you all the directions you need to follow along with our tutorials. Thank you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.